Uses for sulfuric acid, which of these are correct, has bleach in the manufacturing of wood pulp. They're talking about sulfur, did I say sulfur dioxide? This is sulfuric acid, it's not used in as bleach. It's actually sulfur dioxide, so they want to confuse you because people might remember, oh, there's something about bleaching wood pulp to make paper. Oh well. Sulfur dioxide is also used as a preservative. Of detergents, that's true, and not as a fertilizer. And there's no option where three and four are correct. So, D wins. For the complete combustion of these organic compounds, which of these require the least molecule of oxygen? So, the least molecule, the least amount of oxygen required would be something that has the most oxygen with it and the least number of carbon with it. So, <clears throat> whenever I see carbon-3 over here, that'll require res, res, what am I, Scooby-Doo? Less oxygen than, you know, butane over here, so that's out, butene, I guess, that's butene. So, that's automatically out. And I think over here and over here, you know, actually, let's compare these two now. actually compare these two they have similar number of hydrogen and carbon this has a, one extra oxygen so it'll need one less oxygen to completely e combust so this is automatically out right so you're kind of left with B and A and over here you also see four carbons over here right four carbons so I'm gonna think that's out and A is the answer, but let's just confirm, right? I've easily eliminated this and this, but now I've got to confirm for A and B. Just slightly uncertain, so I'm going to write down the equation. It's going to be C3H7OH reacts with unknown amounts of oxygen to produce. It's going to produce three moles of carbon dioxide because there are three carbons, and four moles of water because there are eight hydrogens, right? So, total number of oxygens over here from in carbon are 6 and 4 over here, a total of 10. So there are a total of 10. So you need a total of 10 over here, but you already have 1 over here. So you gotta have 9 from this. So the 2, how do you turn this into a 9? By multiplying by 4.5, right? So bring a line here or like a double line to just separate these two. Okay, second equation, C3H7COOH, I think that we're going to lose this one, oxygen to produce 4 carbon dioxide and still 4 water, water, right, let's separate this like that, you got Eight oxygen atoms, you know, that's the worst eight I drew. I am doing it so you can't see it. It's still pretty bad. And this time I'll erase it so you can see it. Okay, eight oxygen atoms and four from here. A total of 12, but you already have two over here and you need a total of 12 here. So 10 needs to come from here. You can get 10 if you have five oxygens, right? So you need the least moles from this guy, right? So A is our correct answer. And the first time I've done it in white. Which structure is propyl methanoid? Propyl methanoid is going to be propyl methanoid. So let's draw it ulta, because I think the acid part is EDC to draw first. That's methanoate. I'm gonna draw a profile. Nicely done. Nothing on oxygen, right? Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Profile. It does look like profile, methanoate right 
this is going to be H C double O C H two C H two C H three. Right? And I think A is our answer. No, right? Because you need just HCO. You can't have that over here. So I don't see that over here, right? I actually don't see it anywhere. So they probably wrote it the other way around. Let's actually try doing that. It's actually easier to write and draw it like that, but I think they're testing us. That's, okay, that's the question. So let's make the molecule ulta. Let's see if we can figure it out that way. I'm not going to draw the hydrogens this time. I think it's kind of obvious, right? So this is going to be CH3, CH2, CH2O. That's a hydrogen at the end. I think that one's important. OOCH, something like that. And I think you see that with D. Three carbons, exactly that, right? And this. So it can be this one, right? Next to the double O, there should be one carbon with one H. That's our telltale sign. And you don't see that anywhere. So our correct answer is D, actually. I've explained this question in isomers in detail, and this is the most difficult isomer question you could get. Why am I using white? That just looks weird now. Okay, uh, so you're essentially talking about buta isomers for butanol, right? So we'll write that down, butanol, butanol, that's C4, what's, uh, yeah, C4H9OH, butanol. So it's easier to figure out how many isomers you have for butane first. And the isomers are actually, that is one, and you can easily see how this is also an isomer of butane. So this could have, you know, two isomers when it comes to butanol. One could be OH over here. And the other could be the OH here, right? And I can't really explain the second one in detail, but the two isomers are, there are only two for this one. Uh, and let's just draw it side by side. First one is, You could have an OH on one carbon, and the second one you can have it over here, nowhere else but over here, right? And so you have four isomers. Let's kind of make this a little presentable. That's your first, that is your second, forgot to highlight this. Then you have your third one, and then you have your fourth one. All right, the answer is C. Oops, C. The concentration of aqueous sodium carbonate can be found by the reaction with hydrochloric acid of known concentration. The indicator methyl orange is used. Which items do you need? Burette measuring cylinder gas syringe. Okay. Burette measuring cylinder thermometer. You don't really need a thermometer for this, right? Or actually maybe, uh, I don't know. Weird question. Burette pipette conical flask. Hmm. Burette pipette. So Burette's in all of them. This is a weird question. Burette's in all of them. Measuring cylinder is in two of them. 
but you get pipettes in the two of other two. Why would you need a pipette? A pipette. Then you got all different things in the last thing. Okay. Concentration of aqueous sodium carbonate can be found, okay, by the reaction with hydrochloric acid of known concentration. The indicator, so you're doing a indicator is used. Oh, okay. So you could do it multiple ways, I guess, but an indicator is used. So that's a neutralization reaction. Um, yeah, right, you'll keep adding acid to the carbonate until the indicator changes color, which might highlight that the acid in, is in surplus. What's gonna happen is you have a conical flask, the worst conical flask in the world, and you have your potassium carbonate, and you're gonna keep adding acid from a burette, right? The worst burette in the world matches the worst conical flask in the world. If you add like a drop, it's gonna hit here. Like let's add this to water because you have some indicator in the solution as well. Let's give that indicator a color, methyl orange, right? And it's gonna change color if it's an acidic solution. So you put an acid in there, uh, but the acid tries to change the color of the um, methyl orange but it's neutralized by the carbonate because it's reacting with it, hydrogen gas is given off. And yeah, right? So it's given off, so that's, so it won't change the color, so there's no more acid left. But it's not gonna happen until all of this sodium carbonate is gone, right? And once it's gone, oh, sodium carbonate is actually aqueous, so you won't have a chunk of it, right? So no chunk, let's write that down, no chunk. It's gonna be aqueous, no chunk. It's actually a solution, no chunk, not chunky. Okay, and it's gonna, you're gonna add it to no more carbon dioxide is involved, all of the carbonate has been reacted. Then the next drop after that is gonna come in, is gonna change the color of the methyl orange, because now the solution has one drop of acid in it, which is not going anywhere. So the methyl orange will change color. What do you need for that? a conical flask we've already drawn it because the idea is you could actually figure out some other way but they want to use a indicator that's the trick that's how you would be able to do it so you need you need the conical flask how else would you be able to do it Lisa? gas syringe you can collect the volume of carbon dioxide collected right and figure out how much concentration was there as a volume of carbon dioxide. Thermometer could be used to actually keep the heat level. Yeah, and that would, that's more rates than anything. So the thermometer is out. Stopwatches, are, those, those are rate rates. You could do it with the gas syringe actually, but they want to use methyl orange. The only viable answer is C. Which diagram best represents the structure of solid metal? Well, that's B, sir. It's B. Well, this is just destroyed. It's not consistent repeating patterns. This is a little too structured. The electrons are randomly moving around, so that's out. And this in the wall shows that electrons are surrounding this area. So B is the correct answer. Helium and xenon are actually indubitably, undeniably, absolutely inert, inert, but they do not have eight electrons. Helium is a noble gas which has only two electrons. So the correct answer is now B. Which substance is a metal? Has to conduct electricity as a solid. Deja vu, right? Has to, has to, has to. Only metals will do that. Correct answer is C. Steel is produced by blowing oxygen into impure molten iron. So iron's already there. Students suggest two reasons why this process is carried out. The oxygen removes some of the carbon from the your impure iron. So impure iron would have a lot of carbon in it. You have to, so steel has like a very tiny amount of carbon. If it's too much iron, then that iron becomes brittle. And steel has like a 
one percent close to one percent depending on what carbon you want what kind of strength there is actually a range and it's actually that's why you're blowing oxygen into it to remove the carbon because it's gonna react with the oxygen form carbon dioxide and escape the oxygen oxidizes iron to ions so three plus ions actually it's completely not true because they are start you're starting with molten iron which is iron zero right it has no charge it's liquid iron and there's no and the product is also going to be pure iron not with a charge on it so this is just like they're really trying to mess with you so only one can be correct there can be only one which is b